Today on the spot, we check in with what's new this week on Wii Shop Channel and the new releases hitting store shelves. Sophia Tong gets a demo shank, and we sit down with the producers of UFC Undisputed 2010 and Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Today on the spot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Today on the Spot for Tuesday, March 30th. I'm your host, Sean McInnes. Joining me today is my co-host, Giancarlo Veronini. Giancarlo, we've got a great show today. We've got a demo for Shank, and we've got an interview for the new Spider-Man game, Shattered Dimensions. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have really been kind of wondering what Activision was going to do with Spider-Man. There's a lot of talk kind of going on, so really interested to see how that's going to turn out. Do you think it's going to be a guitar peripheral game? It just might very <laughs> it well might, be. It might just yes. be. Uh, nobody knows the answer to that question, but hopefully we'll find that out later in the show when we check out that interview. But now, it's time for the news. Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot News Update for Tuesday, March 30th. I'm Tor Thorson. Two weeks after rumors of an Xbox 360 Slim surface on a Chinese message board, Dutch site Game Kings is touting what it claims are photos of the device, reportedly codenamed Napoleon after the vertically challenged French Emperor. The unconfirmed and very much unofficial photos show a flat console about 60% of the area of the full-size 360. Since no sidelong photos are presented, it's unclear what the thickness of the device is, and there are curiously also no head-on shots of the device. And there's a reason for that. The device pictured is none other than the discontinued Xbox 360 HD DVD player. Microsoft had given the now dead format lukewarm support via an optional peripheral, which is the PlayStation 3's internal Blu-ray player. HD DVD was locked in a life or death struggle with Blu-ray until January 2008, when Warner Brothers opted to support the latter exclusively. Mega retailer Walmart soon followed suit, with format creator Toshiba finally pulling the plug on HD DVD in February of that year. Well, that's your history lesson for the day. On to current events! If you downloaded the Modern Warfare 2 Steamless package this morning, you may have been in for a nasty shock. According to numerous user reports, from the map pack to Activision's uber-successful game launched this morning on Xbox Live, the maps therein would not actually load and matchmaking was, like, totally busted. The problem was then confirmed by none other than Xbox Live programming director Larry Erb, better known as Major Nelson, on his Twitter feed, which is how many middle-aged executives trying to be young and hip communicate with the kids. However, around 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Microsoft sent out a patch that fixed the issues. According to Chief Infinity Ward spokesperson Robert Bowling, the map pack was functioning as normal as about uh, 10.30. Crisis averted! Call back the bombers. I mean, I don't see what the big deal is. It's not like they're charging $15 for only three new maps and two old ones. What's that? Are they are? Oh, my bad. Well, that's it. Your GameSpot News update for Tuesday, March 30th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. All right, thanks for those headlines, Tor. And now it's time for new releases. John Carlo, anything on the calendar this week stand out to you? Yeah, so the big game for me this week is uh, WarioWare DIY. Uh, it's the game where you can basically make your own game, your own little WarioWare game. And uh, Justin's been showing a little bit of it to me this week, and yeah. uh, it looks pretty cool. That is a man who is incredibly creative when you give him any type of like video game software. He, when he was reviewing Forza 3, he became the fake money equivalent of a billionaire with all those decals and cars that he designed. So I haven't seen it yet, but I'm really interested to see what he makes. Yeah, I mean, this game is really great for the creative types like Justin. Um, he made his own version of Asteroids, which looks pretty cool. And then he showed me something that someone else made, which was like a quick little version of Lemmings. So there's wow. a lot of really, really cool stuff that people are already doing. And with that, let's check out the rest of this week's new releases. One week after announcing the successor to the DS, Nintendo is now launching the DSi XL. Available for $190, the DSi XL sports 4.2 inch dual screens, up from the DSi's 3.25. Nintendo claims that XL's battery life clocks in at 4 to 5 hours on maximum brightness and 13 to 17 hours on lowest brightness, on par with the DS Lite. The supersized handheld will also come pre-installed with several games and applications, including Photo Clock, Brain Age Express Arts and Letters, and Brain Age Express Math. Notably, DSiWare games are not transferable to another handheld, meaning they would have to be repurchased on the new DSi XL. Accompanying the release of the DSi XL will be WarioWare DIY, an extension of Nintendo's zany line of chaotic minigame compilations that includes 90 bite-sized games. As its name implies, 
DIY lets gamers take these experiences one step further by creating their own mini-games, either by using pre-made graphics and sound samples, or by starting completely from scratch. WarioWare DIY Showcase for WiiWare doesn't include any game-making tools, but players can download mini-games crafted on the DS Edition. It also includes 70 exclusive mini-games for players to work through. The end of the fiscal year doldrums dominate the remainder of the week. However, Activision will be livening things up a bit with the release of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Stimulus Package. Modern Warfare 2's first map pack arrives this week for the Xbox 360 for 1200 Microsoft points. $5 more than the popular map packs released last year for Call of Duty World at War. Infinity Ward has put into the pack three new maps as well as the crash and overgrown maps seen in the original Modern Warfare. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. And that was your look at the new releases for this week, and now it's time for This Week on Wii, where I don't want to reveal any spoilers or anything, but uh, Super Yum Yum Puzzle Adventures may or may not make the list. Let's check it out. You're going to have to do it yourself this week, as WarioWare DIY Showcase hits WiiWare. Though the game includes a lot of pre-made content, you'll also be able to get games from your friends, the Ninsoft store, or anything you've made on the DS game WarioWare DIY. The game supports up to 4 players and is available for 800 Wii points. Also on WiiWare, the hit PC game Diner Dash has now made its way onto yet another platform. Join Flo as she escapes from the paperwork-driven office environment to start her own restaurant. You'll need to keep her quick on her feet as she seats patrons, takes orders, delivers food, and more. Keep the customers happy and she'll get good tips and grow her restaurant chain. Diner Dash supports up to 4 players in multiplayer mode and is available for 1,000 Wii points. If you want something more retro than a 7-year-old PC game, then Virtual Console has you covered with Ogre Battle 64 Person of Lordly Caliber. Originally released for the Nintendo 64, Ogre Battle 64 is a strategic RPG with different player classes and an elaborate storyline that has many possible endings. The game is available for 1,000 Wii points. And on DSiWare, you can light up the night sky with Disney fireworks. Aim rockets at their matching color and flick them into the air with your stylus. Get the timing right and you can unlock special surprises and rockets. Disney Fireworks comes with 5 themed environments, 15 levels for each world, and is available for 800 DSi points. If explosions aren't your thing, then maybe you'd rather save the turtles. Explore exotic beaches in a quest to help little turtles find their new homes. Dig eggs out of the sand and guide the turtles to safety, avoiding crabs, seagulls, and litter. Save the turtles is available for 500 DSi points. Last up is Super Yum Yum Puzzle Adventures. Priced at 800 DSi points, this puzzle game stars a chameleon called Leon and challenges you to eat fruit, change color, and save babies. There's hours of gameplay, with 48 levels across 4 worlds full of puzzles. Help Leon save his kids from the belly of Miss Tum Tum. That's all we got for you this week. Check back next time for the latest This Week on Wii Shop Channel. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at Super Yum Yum Puzzle Adventures, I, I guess. Now, anyways, it's time for our daily demo where we're going to have a look at Shank. Uh, this is a game that I'm not super familiar with, but I really like the name. Yeah, that's a really great transition, by the way. But yeah, Shank, <laughs> it's, it's a you know, kind of over-top 2D side-scrolling action game, kind of a classic gameplay style, and you're kind of this Rambo-like character who goes around shanking people nice. and using chainsaws and things like that. Just Generally destructive. You had me at Rambo, and then you had me again at shanking people. Yeah, and we're <laughs> going to take a look. Sophia Tong has a look at our daily demo of Shank. Hey everyone, Sophia here for our daily demo. I'm joined by Alex Charlo from EA. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you're here to show us Shank. You bet. Okay, so tell us about this game. The last time I saw it, it was at PAX last year. It was like a 2D brawler, so... Sure, right. So uh, so Shank is a cinematic brawler. Mm -hmm. It's being built by Clay Entertainment and EA. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really kind of seeks to answer you know, that question of what, what, would it, what would have happened if those you know, beat-em-ups from you know, the Genesis, Arcade, Nintendo days uh, had evolved. You know, the Double Dragons, the Streets of Rage, the, the Bad Dudes. Yeah. Um, and so what Shank does is it kind of innovates on you know that original you know classic gameplay mm -hmm. by introducing you know this really crazy cinematic story that kind of feels like a Quentin Tarantino movie, mm -hmm. uh, a really cool unique art style that looks like a cartoon, yeah. um, and just a really awesome combo system. Yeah, let's jump in and take a look. Sure. So 
See here, I was sliding, jumping around. Yeah, you bet. So what we're showing right now is actually an abbreviated level. This is kind of a highlight reel of some of the stuff you're going to see in a much uh, larger level. And right now, Shank is kind of working his way through a meatpacking plant to hunt down a character called the Butcher. And uh, what you're seeing right now is um, you know, a lot of combat, uh, combo heavy combat, especially you can see just grabbed a dog and threw it. It's pretty, <laughs> a lot of blood. pretty awesome. A lot of blood, definitely a uh, mature game. <laughs> yep, chainsaw for sure. Uh, and there's also a lot of platforming going on as well. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things about the game is the, the combat is pretty dynamic. So um, if you get really good with the controls, you can start to pull off really cool moves. You can see Shank kind of shooting from both sides. Um, that classic you know, yeah. action movie kind of pose. <laughs> uh, one of my favorites. It look good. <laughs> exactly, right. The cool thing is that the, the controls are really accessible, so anyone can kind of pick up and play. Yeah. Um, but the level of depth is there, so you can see you know, right now, he just grappled the guy, picked him up and threw him around. So as you switch between weapons, as you switch between combos, you're going to be able to put together these long strings of attacks. And how do the controls work? So every weapon is mapped to a button, so they right. just whip it out. Yeah, but it's pretty seamless. So um, most of the attacks are mapped to the, the face buttons on your controller. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple that are mapped to shoulders like grapples and kind of pin grapples. And you can switch behind them, uh, between them pretty seamlessly. And each time you use a different weapon, you're getting a whole new move set yeah. attached with that. So for example, it'll really pay off to switch between your shank and your chainsaw quickly because your chainsaw will be much faster in that switch mm -hmm. than it would be if you were just mastering on the chainsaw button oh, and doing okay, only yeah. chainsaw combos. Got it. And what about weapons? Are there going to be more weapons as time goes uh, There definitely will be more weapons. You're going to have to see how you uh, unlock them. But again, those as well are going to have whole new move sets and animations with them. Uh -huh. And what about the story? So what's the deal? What, what is Shank doing here? Sure. So without going too much into the details of the story, basically this is your classic revenge story. It's, <laughs> it's one man kind of going up against a world of people who have wronged him. Um, as you can see in this level, he's running through the meatpacking plant, fighting these kind of underground gang members as he works his way through the butcher. Uh, and the game's going to be a lot of that, but you're going to be doing it through different environments. You're going to see a lot of really cool, crazy, over-the-top bosses and characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's one of those stories where you're really going to want to see what happens next. I mean, it, it definitely feels like a Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> that Kill Bill kind of... Um, you know, Pulp Fiction, grit, yeah. kinda, you know, dirty, Maybe. cool edits. Lots cool. of violence. Yeah, lots of, blood. lots of violence. The cooler the move, the more the violence, as you yeah. can see. Ooh. So this one's kind of neat. You have like a silhouette, the sun setting in the background. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things that the teams worked really hard on are the environmental effects. So, um, you know, the game isn't just one style the entire way through. You're going to see a lot of different environments. Um, and with those environments, uh, a lot of different lighting, a lot of different special effects go on, too. And they all kind of make sense based on the weapons you're using the attacks you're doing. Yeah. So you can see right now he's in a kind of the frozen food section, I guess, <laughs> of, of the area. He's fighting pretty big guys. And one of the really great things about Shank is it kind of maintains a lot of the things that those old brawlers have. Like, for example, you have those characters that are randomly named up in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, Donnie. You, yeah, like you don't quite know their deal and you don't yeah. really know why you need to know their name, but you feel better because you know that you're hitting Atlas right now. <laughs> Um, it's not just a random soldier. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? There, there's kind of a, a, a point to it. And some wall running here. You got it, yeah. A couple of uh, kind of parkour-esque elements. You can see shaking. A little slow-mo. Jump and there. grab on things. Yeah, definitely. More of those environmental effects. You can kind of see the screen blurs as he does certain moves. Yeah. Kind of adds a little bit of depth stylish. to it. stylish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The animation is really fluid. Um, the game was actually nominated for uh, excellence in visual arts at the Independent Games Festival. Oh, wow. So uh, it's definitely a style that, you know, people just love to watch. I mean, it's, it's yeah. colorful. You don't see a lot of really gritty, violent kind of cartoon <laughs> games anymore. Probably so. not going to be aired on, like, the Cartoon Network or anything. Yeah, exactly. Soon. But it looks like it could be, and that's, that's one of the cool things about it. Right. You can see he's attacking a bunch of guys that have different, different weapons and moves as well. So mm -hmm. um, this Jose guy had, <laughs> had a pistol. He fought a guy with two machetes. He's fought a couple of guys with knives as well. And so there's like a variety of enemies as you get through the levels. And do you know how many levels there will be? The um, you know, we're actually not talking about that yet, but I can tell you what, it's going to be an incredibly satisfying experience. Quality mm -hmm. is like the biggest thing mm -hmm. uh, with the clay guys, and, and that's what they're building towards. A little cutscene here. Mm -hmm. you're unbelievable showing your and one of the other big things about the game is that you're going to have to use a bit of strategy when you're attacking guys. So when you're flooded in a room full of people, you don't just want to hack and slash. Mm -hmm. I think you saw before the dog would like dive at you. <laughs> so uh, just it, chuck the dog. Yeah, right. You got, but you gotta, you gotta, you know, kind of prioritize. Do you want to get the dog, or do you want to get these other guys with the swords or, or the knives or the guns? Here in this boss battle, you're gonna see some strategy going on too. The butcher. Yeah, the butcher's here. 
he's trying to use his grapple uh, or his hook to kind of hook you in and kill you. But if you're evasive enough, uh -huh. uh, you can find a way to kind of grab it, grapple him, and choke him with his own chain. Oh, so you have to like bring down that piece of meat? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And if you don't, he's going to grab you with his chain from across the room and throw you even harder than uh, you can see him doing here. You can also kind of attack him with the conventional way, mm -hmm. but with every boss, you're going to want to figure out you know, what, what the best way to do it is. Otherwise, you're going to end up using all your life and all of your, of your ammo. All right, great. So when can we expect the game to come out and what platform? Sure, so Shank will be out in, uh, in late summer mm -hmm. of this year, 2010, uh, and it'll be out on um, the PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, and PC. All right, well, thank you so much for coming by and showing us yeah, the game. thanks for having us. All right, and now that was our look at Shank. Now on with the rest of the show. And that was your daily demo for Shank. Now it's time to take a look at UFC Undisputed 2010. I actually flew out to New York last week to have a look at the game, and it looks pretty awesome. I'm impressed. Let's have a look at that interview right now. Uh, so hi, my name is Nevin Dravinsky, producer on UFC Undisputed 2010. Uh, Creative Fighter in the UFC Undisputed 2010 game went through a lot of improvements. Uh, one of the biggest things is the visual change that, that went through. Uh, in the 2009 product, we um, were very sort of uh, regimented in how we allowed fighters to be created and also in, in how the roster fighters were created. And this year we've gone with the uh, uh, take of actually picking moves a la carte from various disciplines. We allow you to say, you know, create a move uh, from, uh, you know, one discipline apply it to your fighter, you're literally placing moves per controller input per position. So things like all the creative fighter parts got touched, uh, there's a lot more uh, realism to the parts themselves. Uh, how we actually apply things like logos and tattoos, last year was very menu intensive. We looked at the design of how people actually utilize the menus, uh, stripped down a lot of the uh, unnecessary aspects to it. So I think, I think what's really cool about it is since there is so much more depth and variety, it's really going to encourage a lot more kind of community discussion about how to create your fighter and actually see what other people are able to do in the game. The career mode in UFC Undisputed 2010 is actually going to be uh, as you mentioned, have a lot more investment, that, or you're going to have a more kind of personal attachment to your character. Uh, we've done things like uh, added the addition of a fighter voice, for example. We recorded multiple voices of multiple uh, sort of ethnicities that you can apply to your fighter. And, uh, you know, going back to the idea of kind of a, uh, emotional investment in your character, that fighter voice allows you to participate in kind of interviews, and we give you options uh, in terms of creating rivalries, for example. You'll be in interviews or weigh-in cutscenes, for example. You'll be able to respect your opponent, disrespect your opponent. And these all have consequences which will apply later on in your career. You know, disrespect your opponent, you might create uh, more of a rivalry throughout the game. Again, there's a lot of things that went into the, the creation of the career mode that create a better sort of relation between you and your created fighter. So a lot of improvements went into the gameplay system for uh, the 2010 product. Uh, the game plays a lot faster. It's not that we just sped up all the animations. We actually went down at a system level. Uh, we introduced the, the concept of the sways, the leans, the southpaw attacks. Um, but then as a result, you know, when I'm talking about going to a system level, like little things like taking a lot of the reactions, instead of making them animated reactions, we put them in our Havoc system. That means that the reactions are pl playing uh, faster, they're in the engine, you're getting uh, less control taken away from you as the player. It may, it may seem inconsequential when you look at one animation, one transition, one pass, but when you take it as a sum of its parts, these are all necessary things that had to go into making the gameplay better. Uh, you'll see the collision system is much improved this year, and we had to redo that you know, simply because of adding all these new features. I and mean, the game plays a lot better this year. It plays faster. I mean, the game actually just looks that much better. And once people actually get the opportunity to play it, I think they'll be very surprised with how much we've been able to do within a year. The ground game has gone through extensive redesign this year. Uh, as you mentioned, we have flash submissions this year. That's one of the, uh, the new additions to the game this year. We've redesigned kind of how we utilize the submission system. We have our kind of uh, the shine system, which was uh, one of two ways you could play the game uh, last year. So we've done away with the mashing of the buttons for our submission defense. This year it's all focused on rotations on the right stick, on the shine. Uh, we, we give you the option to uh, initiate and finish submissions via spinning on the right stick, as well as fighting off submissions. So it's a much more elegant way of kind of representing status of a submission. And last year we kind of 
saw that there was no real way to kind of indicate who was winning or losing uh, uh, in the game. Uh, ground game uh, has this concept of sub-positions that are in the game this year. Each position has a sub-position. You can posture up in a position, much like in real UFC fights, give yourself space, unload, and, and have uh, fight-ending punches. Uh, so you can finish the fight from any position this year. You can rock uh, an opponent finish the fight. You can also change your submissions. You have multiple submissions per position based on altering your posture. So there's a lot more depth and variety to the ground game this year. And you know, this is basically done so you're spending more time punching people in the face and less time worrying about uh, you know, blocking your transitions. The presentation in the UFC Undisputed 2010 game I think went through a complete overhaul. Uh, you know, we introduced a new graphics package as the UFC moved to their new graphics package. And that really speaks to our kind of close working relationship with UFC. Um, you know, we're certainly able to get anything that makes their, uh, you know, pay-per-view experience what it is or their live shows what it is. We get access to, we get access to their people, and that certainly makes its way into the game. Uh, you know, again, it, I always go back to that statement of we did things that we wanted to do. We didn't, we did things because we wanted to, not because we had to, you know, and that certainly carries through in every aspect of the game. I mean, from the visuals especially, because you can see that, uh, you know, a direct uh, comparison that there's so much that went into this game that we really wanted to make sure we were making the best MMA game ever made. UFC Undisputed 2010 will be available May 25th on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 and coming out in the fall on PSP. All right, UFC Undisputed 2010 looks really good. Uh, G, it's time for an interview for Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Um, you know, this whole time, I'm going to admit, I thought it was Spider-Man. I thought it was Peter Spider-Man. I thought that was his name, but apparently I'm wrong. Like, is that, you mean like the plural as in spider men <laughs> No, Spider-Man, like the last name, like Goldman oh. or Spider-Man. Well, I think it's because the hyphen clearly means that Spider-Man oh, is a man who is yeah. a spider, okay. but not really. I think I missed that part. Yeah, I so, didn't read that part, but yeah. mostly because I can't read. That's unfortunate. Yeah. But anyway, let's uh, take a look at our interview for the next Spider-Man game, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Hi, my name is Megan Morgan, and I am a senior producer at Activision. Today I'm here to introduce Activision's new Spider-Man game, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Shattered Dimensions is a really exciting, new, unique concept for Spider-Man that combines four different universes together in one game. We really wanted to build upon the strengths of our previous Spider-Man games, but at the same time, shake things up. Do a little something different outside of the box with Spider-Man this time. So we looked at the Marvel comic lore and saw that there's all of these universes that haven't been brought to life yet in video games. So we chose four of these universes to combine together into one game. Today, we're very excited to announce the first two of the four universes, the Amazing Universe and the Noir Universe. The Amazing Universe is the classic Spider-Man universe that's been portrayed in the comics for the past 50 years, known and loved by fans throughout the world. It's a throwback to the comics. It's a very classic style of ink on paper type of comic book simulation graphic style. The Noir Universe is a retelling of the Spider-Man origin story, as if Spider-Man had gotten his powers in the 1930s. The graphic style of this universe is a bit darker than, your, than what you're used to seeing for Spider-Man, gritty, a film noir type of, of um, graphic style that plays with areas of light and shadow. The difference between the universes is not just purely graphics. The Spider-Men each have a core gameplay mechanic that is unique to each universe. In the Amazing Universe, his core gameplay mechanic is web-based combat. So Amazing Spider-Man uses his webs to blind his enemies as web shots, to create big hammers, weapons, staffs, balls that he shoots at enemies and knocks them down, as well as um, interacts with, uses his webs to interact with objects in the environment, pick them up and throw them at enemies to take them out. In the Noir Universe, the core gameplay mechanic is stealth-based combat. The player must really use strategy to stay in the shadows and take advantage of the fact that he is hidden from the enemies, sneak up on them, identify, identify where they are in the, in the universe, sneak up on them and take them down with a variety of different stealth takedowns, all the while really strategizing on how to move best throughout the level without being seen by any of the enemies. Spider-Man and his villains have a very iconic type of relationship as portrayed throughout the comics historically. And we really wanted to highlight the relationship that Spider-Man has with a lot of these very iconic villains in the game. 
The two villains that we are announcing today are Craven in the Amazing Universe and Hammerhead in the Noir Universe. Craven is the world's greatest hunter, and usually when Craven and Spider-Man are fighting, Craven is hunting Spider-Man through the streets of New York City. But in our game, we've turned the tables on this relationship a little bit, and Spider-Man has traveled to Craven's turf and is hunting Craven through a jungle. In the noir universe, the villain that we're announcing today is Hammerhead. And Hammerhead is a very traditional, iconic Spider-Man villain who does not yet exist in the noir comic series. But when we were brainstorming of which villains we wanted to include in the game, we felt that our designers felt that Hammerhead would be a perfect fit for the noir universe. So we approached Marvel and pitched the idea of creating a Hammerhead exclusive to the game for the noir universe. Marvel was very excited about it and worked closely with us to develop and design the Hammerhead that is in our game. So today, this is just a first look at Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, and I can promise you there will be a lot more coming in the future months. Look for us at WonderCon, E3, Comic-Con for more information about the other two universes, as well as more information about a number of the other iconic Spider-Man villains in the game. There you have it, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Now, Jody passed along a note for me today, and she wanted me to explain that there's no community spotlight on today's episode, but if you guys want to get your fill of GameSpot community action, make sure to stick around for our Battlefield Bad Company 2 game night tomorrow, Wednesday, where you can play with me, Chris, Tom, and maybe even some special appearances by Brian and Kevin. So it should be a lot of fun. Well, everybody, it's been a pleasure, and thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Today on the Spot. I'm Sean McInnes. I'm Giancarlo Veronini. So long, everybody. Have a look at the game, and it looks totally awesome. And you know what else? I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for the update and the news tour, uh, Giancarlo. It's... Try that again. <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> And that was your look at the new releases, and now it's time for This Week on Wii, and I don't want to re-re- No, blah, blah.